In this video, what I plan to do is install the GM LS2 ignition coil and a modified GM PC2 crank sensor on a Tecumseh HH120 engine. That would be on my Sears Suburban, 65 Sears Suburban tractor. Uh, I'm going to start with the engine simulator because it's the easiest thing for me to do and it's nice and warm in here. And uh, basically it's an HH120 block. There's no pistons in it, no valves, no camshaft. But it does have a treadmill motor on it and a dial where I can just dial up the RPM I want. And it holds it there real nice and steady. Uh, I have a box down here. It's a metal box with uh, the LS2 coil in it. And uh, I've had problems with the uh, USB oscilloscope and the laptop computer uh, not liking all the ignition noise. So I just mounted the ignition in a, in a box. I have a lid for it. It's grounded so that I can uh, try and suppress uh, a lot of the ignition noise for the sake of the, uh, the laptop computer. Um, I'll be using my uh, laser tack right here and uh, to measure the RPMs the target for the laser tack is on the flywheel here so that gives me my uh, my RPM measurements okay I've installed the modified PC2 sensor on this bracket here that that fits the Tecumseh real nice it's just made out of angle iron and uh, the green wire off the PC2 runs off to the uh, ignition coil which is in a, in a metal box. Okay, I have a, a little mark on the, uh, the, the trigger coil or crank sensor here and this is the tall trigger pin. We're going to be setting that up first and when we're all done with that then we'll have to go back and, and set the advanced pin. What I've done is uh, set the air gap between the tall trigger pin for top dead center at 12 thousandths. So uh, use my feeler gauge for that. Uh, so uh, actually it's at 13 thousandths today but that's close enough. I just want to know what it is. Okay what I'm doing here is I'm going to bring up the RPM very slowly Right now there's no spark because it's below the, the voltage is below the threshold is to, to turn on the spark to start it. So I'm going to very slowly turn up the RPM. Whoops, I can hear a spark. That's one funny thing here. I can hear the spark before I see it. So we already have a spark. i got to turn it back down. <clears throat> Okay, we have a spark just starting now. So, uh, I'm measure the RPM. Okay, we got about 66 RPM, which is uh, which is pretty low for turning on a spark. But since it's a top dead center spark, it's not going to kick back. And if the carburetor is full of fuel and ready to go, uh, the engine will start running right at this very low RPM. Takes a big load off of the, the battery and the starter motor. Okay, I moved the uh, camera over to the spark plug. I can hear the spark before I see it, usually. I'll let the camera run here for a little bit so the, uh, the framing with the, uh, the slow RPM and the, the camera framing might catch a spark once in a while. But you can see it's a pretty nice spark.
to bring up the timing light so we uh, should be able to see the uh, tall trigger pin for starting right at the top dead center mark uh, on the flywheel. Okay, now for the hard part. Uh, we've got the top dead center trigger pin set and we need to make an adjustment for the advanced trigger pin, the short one over here. Now with the, the OEM pin height from Tecumseh, the gap between the advanced trigger pin and the pole piece on the uh, trigger would be about 90 thousandths, which is about four times longer than it needs to be. So, um, this particular flywheel, I think, uh, came off an engine that had the, the original first generation solid state ignition that was totally under the flywheel. <clears throat> and, you know, 10, 20 years ago, I probably added these trigger pins to the, to the flywheel. Well, when I did, I took, uh, I just drilled the hole and put the pins in. Uh, that's that's actually covered in the uh, the installation for the Kohler the K161 engine. But um, in order to to do what we have to do here, we have to raise this pin up. It's uh, not seated down so deep. So um, I was able to just take the flywheel off because it's just on there, pan tight, <coughs> and. Uh, the hole I drilled for it was all the way through, so I just drove it back from the other side. And that was easy. I'm not sure what the rest of the flywheels are. If the trigger pin sets into a blind hole, uh, you might have difficulty raising the trigger pin up. But uh, it, was, it, just, it was easy for me here. So what we have to do is set the, the height of the trigger pin so the air gap between the advanced trigger pin and the uh, trigger coil is about, my target's like 24 thousandths. Um, this one's about 25 on the, on the first try, so I'm, you know, that's plenty good enough. And I just know what it is. So we can uh, <coughs> proceed to, to test it and see uh, how that, that performs. Break, break. We got a news bulletin. The hardest part of this. Uh, project just got a lot, lot easier. Uh, I finished my SS-12 a couple weeks ago and I've been working on uh, a better way to do the trigger pins and uh, uh, in the meantime I've been helping my friend Eric in South Carolina to, uh, to, to help him come up with an, a custom advanced trigger pin. So after he's Following what I was going to present here, he said to heck with it. He just has a small lathe. He's going to make a new trigger pin. So that's what he did. And that's by far the easiest, simplest, and best way to go. So I never had that option uh, available to me before. But uh, so that's what we're going to do. And all this material I have here on how to make a trigger pin with the right mechanical dimensions, uh, I'm going to call it out of this video. The video is going to be about half as, as long as it would otherwise. And uh, we'll just uh, re replace it with, he's going to make a, a trigger pin for me, a custom made advanced trigger pin. All we have to do is don't remove the flywheel. Don't mess with the tall trigger pin on the Tecumseh engine. And all we have to do is just remove the OEM advanced trigger pin and put in, install the the uh, the new uh, custom trigger pin. It's got a different height to it, so you won't need to make any measurements or or anything because uh, that's all accounted for in the making of the the uh, custom trigger pin. So uh, I'll be putting together another YouTube titled Trigger Pins, and uh, all of the material that I have was gathering here. I'll, I'll just put off in, a, in that other video. Uh, while I'm here, I might mention in the background, 
you probably saw this Chrysler control module hanging on the side of the simulator. <clears throat> this is one of the, the modern versions of the, the mid-80s type uh, Chrysler ignition system. and I just leave it mounted permanently on the, on the simulator so I can use it to, for testing trigger coils. Okay, what, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is uh, take the trigger coil and move it over to the the uh, my 65 Sears Suburban tractor and uh, the, the full up engine on that. So this ignition, this engine uh, originally had the first generation solid state ignition on it, uh, which was uh, underneath the flywheel, and on top of the flywheel was where the pulse transformer was uh, installed, and so. Uh, years, many, many years ago, I replaced all that with a uh, with a Chrysler control module, which has always worked fine throughout all these years. But I needed something to test this on, so I'm going to put it on my my faithful favorite tractor here. Um, so well, what I did is I've mounted the the uh, trigger coil on there with a trigger coil bracket, and I've already set the air gap. Uh, to the uh, to tall trigger pin to 12 thousandths so uh, that uh, that should be done you can see that like this okay that's fine and now we have to to uh, make the air gap on a the short trigger pin for advanced spark 24 thousandths uh, I just uh, checked the gap on it. It's, it's the OEM trigger pin is in there at 80 thousandths air gap, so that's way, way too much. So we have to raise that pin. Put the cold chisel between the vice grips and the flywheel and tap it. And I was able to raise the pin enough to to get it where I could pull it out. To uh, to mount the GM LS2 ignition coil, I noticed uh, a couple of existing you know, 5 uh, 516 screws here, right, right uh, on the top of the head for the framework for the gas tank. And so I just made a had a little piece of Z bracket, and I so I made a bracket to mount my ignition coil uh, right there. So uh, that that was uh, pretty easy. Okay, here's a little bit of another view of it. Okay, uh, a look at the ignition coil from the connector side. Uh, we can see the red wire here, the one that's the closest to the, the terminal for the spark plug is here. That goes off to the ignition switch. I already had a battery powered ignition type switch in it so I didn't have to change the switch. Uh, the green wire is the trigger signal coming up from the, uh, the modified GM PC2 crank sensor and the black wire goes off to the ground. Okay, there's actually two ground wires in there. The black wire is the regular ignition ground and on the, uh, the original vehicle it was on there's a brown wire for the uh, ground for the computer signals. Uh, I just tied those two wires together with the separate connectors on the pins in there and then then just came on out to, uh, with one. Okay I guess uh, one last uh, test run and we can wrap up this installation.